Welcome to the Jeremiah Show, and out comes the sun with Mariel Hemingway and Melissa Yamaguchi. Our special guest today is so important. (laughs) (laughs) So very, very cool. Today, we've brought our two shows together, our two radio shows together to celebrate the comedy icon. Our very special guest today is John Cleese. He thank, is one you. Of- thank you, thank you, fans. Thank you. <laughs> Take, okay. a bow, Take a bow. Take a bow. He's one of the most recognized and popular comic actors in the world. In fact, the father. What do you mean, one, one of the? <laughs> I'm going to get to that. Who <laughs> wrote this dribble? I'm not. No, no, Jeremiah. We had we did a deal before this, Ray. You were going to be nice. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get through this, am I? Should I just give up now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. He's on a list of 50 of the most revered names in entertainment. 50 Uh, of the most? Yeah. More than 300 comedians, comedy writers, producers, and directors on both sides of the Atlantic have not named John Cleese. I better not tell you this. Number two, John, (laughs) on the list of the world's most talented comedians. And it was compiled for Channel 4. I hope number one is dead. (laughs) Number, in fact, number one is dead. So you're really oh good. So what are you talking about? What's this number two nonsense? In? I guess they gave him the they gave him number one. They gave him number one, even though he's dead. Um, oh my god! So I don't know if I'm going to get through this, but John, you can call me the X number two now. The number one. <laughs> <laughs> We listen, you want to take charge because this Jeremiah guy is hopeless. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I feel like I got to speed, speed, uh, speed up a little bit so I can get through this. John is probably <laughs> best known for his television work on Monty Python's Flying Circus and Faulty Towers. If you ask anyone under 20 who John Cleese is, they give you a quizzical look at first, and when you say, Nick, the nearly headless ghost in the Harry Potter film series. They light up and shout, I love John Cleese. <laughs> this, this is a true story. Uh, John has appeared in numerous movies, including Time Bandits, Silverado, The Out of Towners, Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, and The Day the Earth Stood Still. He had leading roles in several comedies, such as A Fish Called Wanda, which is a cult classic and happens to be my dad's favorite movie of all time. He's done voice work in numerous films, including the Shrek series, as well as Charlotte's Web and Trolls. And when I first met John, I called him Mr. Cleese. And I asked him, may I call you John? And he replied, yes, but please alternate between Mr. Cleese and John. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, John, uh, to the show. I got to (laughs) That wasn't too hard on you, was it? You're number one. We oh, just, no, we... it's fine. It's here. Well, you can do a bit more fawning later on, but that's enough for the time being. <laughs> All right, John. So here's my question I want to lead off here with. They say that tragedy and time plus time equals comedy. Uh-huh. And it feels like we have tragedy all of the time now. How do mm-hmm. we get back to the comedy, John? That's a very good question. Seriously, I, I was reading something yesterday, and there was a list of all the comedy shows on BBC in 1991, 31 years ago, and there were nine or ten good-natured, funny, likable comedies. And now I can't name one. Hmm. I know. That's... I mean, it's partly because the people in charge, as usual, have absolutely no idea what they're doing but i think it's uh, it's it's something about the times I and mean, these are terribly anxious times and politically it's very very worrying you see i once helped a psychiatrist write two books about psychology psychiatry and the thing i learned which stuck in my mind is there's a stress chart that is uh, produced um for the health companies you know by statisticians, and it's this thing that causes you the, you the most stress. Stress, for example, uh, death of 
of a spouse is a hundred points. You know, losing a job is seventy-eight or something like that. Mm. And what I discovered, and this is the shocking thing, was that um, an increase in the number of rows you have on a regular basis with your wife. Most people have a a, a row with their spouse, you know, uh, in a month so many times, but an increase costs you thirty-eight points. And a decrease in the number of rows you're having with your wife or spouse costs you 38 points. In other words, the stress is not whether the change is good or bad, it's just the change. Interesting. I think we're living in times that are so stressed and so changed that people are desperate to look for uh, uh, an authority figure to make them feel safer. And of course, they're choosing exactly the wrong people. Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of, uh, that's my...